Why is it so hard? People get motivated to go to a football game, to a basketball game. They get motivated sometimes even play Xbox. But sometimes, you know, when you try to encourage people to get together, we're going to have a khalaqa, right? We're going to uh, talk about a certain topic of Islam. You know, come to my house. Or fa we'll watch a lecture. We'll watch Nomen Ali Khan, you know? Uh, or someone okay. else. Hopefully something better, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. A lot of times the motivation is not there the same way it is for some of these for other, other things. things yeah. Why is that? Have you seen this? Sure. I mean, there's different kinds of people. There, Alhamdulillah, there are people, especially uh, in the Muslim community now, that have found motivation. And they're really driven to do things. And they get really frustrated because their friends aren't motivated, mm -hmm. right? First of all, you have to be patient with your friends because you weren't always motivated yourself. It took a while to get you to a certain point, right? And you can't give up on your friends. You can't say, oh, they're not motivated. Forget it. I won't even call them the next time. No, you keep calling them. You keep inviting them. You pastor them, you pastor them, you pastor them until you, they finally listen this one time. Because it all, all it takes is one reminder coming out of somebody's mouth. And by Allah's permission, that reminder is like a bullet that goes through any bulletproof vest and goes right into the heart. And it hits a person and it can change their life. My words and your words can't change anybody. But when Allah puts power in our words, he decides one time for this one person, it could be a million people watching this video. But there's one person sitting there that these words will reach and Allah decides it's going to change their life. And He can. And if Allah doesn't say that, it, we could talk till we're blue in the face. We could, Nuh is probably a much, definitely a much better speaker than we'll ever be. He's talking for how long to the same audience? 950 years, nothing changes, right? Which means for us, we can't quit reminding. And we can't quit remembering that Allah is the one who changes people. And motivation is like that. It'll come over time. Like Umar, my favorite example, Umar mm -hmm. radiallahu did not, was five years after he became Muslim. The Prophet started delivering his message. For five years, this guy was not Muslim radiallahu anhu. The question is, what was he doing for five years? We understand how he became Muslim. That's a later story. But if you ask what's he doing for five years, you could basically answer that with one word, partying. Guys going out hunting, horseback riding, beating up some dudes, drinking. This is what he was doing. He was busy partying. So if you call him, hey, have a, let's have a discussion about the purpose of life. Or about the afterlife. Or I gotta go shoot some spears or something. You know what I'm saying? He was busy. There are people like that even today. Hey, you wanna go to a lecture? Nah, man, I gotta catch a movie. No, nah, there's a game. It's game time. It's Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's football time. It's whatever, you know? People have things they're doing. But you, have, you can't give up on people like that because Allah describes their hearts like a rock that's got water inside and you keep tapping at it and you tap at it and you tap at it and eventually a little tiny crack. And when that crack happens, water comes out water just like comes faith out. comes out. Yes. It's just like that faith comes out. So some people, it's easy. They just completely transform overnight. And for some people, it takes a long time. And we should be respectful of that and not give up on those kinds of people. Keep knocking on the heart. Hopefully yeah. that water will come out. I actually tell you a story. A friend of mine, Hold, hold, okay. hold don't, don't lose your place you right there. We okay. got the same. We got to go to break. Don't lose your place. We're going to hear about the story from the friend. And show with the CEO of Baina Institute, Noman Ali Khan, and please continue where you left off. Yeah. So I was telling you about a friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, going off of the example of the heart that takes the time to open up. Yes. So this friend of mine, his his mom was Christian, dad was Muslim, and he was raised a Muslim, and his mom, I mean, he's now almost thirty just did not accept Islam. She just stayed on her religion, the religion of her parents. Uh, very devout Christian. And little by little, little by little, little by little. And in th after 30 years, like 29 years, she became Muslim. I mean, she was a Christian when he was born. And for 29 years, he knows his mother as a Christian. And at the end of the day, eventually Allah put something in her heart and it opened. You don't give up on people. You keep making du'a for them, you keep striving behind them. And this is not an isolated story, there are lots of people like that. You know, we think when we give somebody a reminder and they don't change right away, that, man, this guy doesn't listen. She doesn't listen, she doesn't care. We don't realize, when you say something to somebody, it goes inside the ear, it's like, a, it's like getting exposed to allergies, it sits there and after a while you react, right? Mm -hmm. It's like that, it could sit there and simmer and simmer and simmer and eventually, it comes out of Islam. That's actually what happened with Omar, the story of Omar. He heard Islam way back, early on. He heard it from the Prophet himself. He tried to beat up the Prophet one time before he was Muslim. He hid behind the veil of the Kaaba at night time. The veil is black, the Kaaba is black, and he's hiding behind it. It's completely invisible. There's no night lighting at the time. 
and the Prophet was praying and he hid behind it until he snuck right in front of the Prophet. So the Prophet doesn't even know that he's praying, that, uh, that, that the, guy, the guy's hiding behind the veil, he's about to jump out and attack him. The Prophet was recited, praying and reciting Qur'an. And he recited and he thought, Umar is listening to the Qur'an and he thinks to himself, this is beautiful. Wow, he must be a poet. He didn't say it, he was thinking it. And the Qur'an says, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرِ It's not the word of a poet. The Prophet didn't hear him, but this was the next verse that he was reciting, the next ayah that he was reciting. Umar said, how do you know that? He must be a mind reader. The next verse, next ayah is, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنْ It's not the word of a mind reader. قَدِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ How little you like to remember. How little an effort you make to truly remember. تَنزِيلٌ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ It's the revelation from the master of all worlds. So he's thinking it's just in his mind, he's praying, reciting the verbatim word of God, yeah. and these are coming out. These are coming out, and he's hiding behind the veil. The Prophet Amazing. doesn't even know he's there. He got so terrified, he ran away. That's actually not the day he became Muslim. He just he was so shocked by what just happened. He came to attack the Prophet ﷺ, he ran away. He, he became Muslim much after that. But you know what? The first crack had already been caused. And it only gets bigger and bigger. Like a dam, you cause a crack, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like that. You know? So we shouldn't underestimate the words of reminder. People might dismiss it at the time. A lot of times people dismiss advice because they're too full of pride at the time. If I try, try to tell my sister something, my cousin something, my uncle something, it's, come on, don't bother, don't, don't waste my time. They don't want to look like they're listening because it might even be, why should I make you feel like you won? I had to listen to you. Who do you think you are? And maybe once you left, they're like, yeah, he was right, I should have listened to him. Mm -hmm. But they can't let you see that because it's a matter of pride now, right? It's okay. Don't, you don't, we don't have to give people advice and they transform their lives. Because that transformation is not up to us. But we do have to continuously remind. This is the teachings of all prophets. Prophets didn't see change for decades sometimes. And Allah, what's the advice Allah gave to our messenger? You're not going to find a better speaker, you're not going to find a better message, you're not going to find a better audience that understands the message directly, the, the Quraysh. Imagine people that hear the best message from the best teacher for 10 straight years and still don't listen. Can you imagine? What an impossible audience. What does God tell His Messenger? Just keep reminding. Your job is just to remind. So it's not our job to convert our or job to change to someone's uh, uh, heart. That's on the Creator, but ours is just to... Sincere... Sincere, considerate reminder. Considerate means you care about that person. You're not just there to tell them they're going to hell. You're not there to tell them they're wrong. You care about them, like you care about your own child. You care about your own brother. You care about your own, you know, and they're in the sense your brother too, because you have the same father, Adam alayhi salam. So they are your brother and your sister in humanity. You know, that this, that's the reason Allah told us we come from single parents. So we think of each other as family. So it's that caring concern. A lot, of, a lot of times people give advice in a way that's very insulting. Yo, sister, you're not wearing hijab. Don't you know that's in Islam? What kind of Muslim are you? That's how you would, if your mother wasn't wearing it, that's how you talk to her? There's a way to talk to people, right? This is what the prophets taught us. How to talk to people. Not just what to say, but how to say it. How considerate we have to be in delivering a message. Because that can soften people's hearts. You know? Laynul uh, qulub. Qaydul Qulub, the Arab says, the softness of the hearts can become the prison of the hearts. You soften somebody's hearts, that's like, it's like they're in your pocket now. You own them. Anas Abidul Ihsan, they say, people are enslaved to excellent behavior. You, be, you behave excellently with someone and they are yours. They're yours. This is what the Prophet was, it was excellent with people. One of my favorite stories of the excellence of the Prophet is. Uh, when he conquered Mecca, when Allah gave him victory in Mecca, the custodian of the, the Kaaba, you know the Kaaba has a key. Yes. That was a mushrik. Mm -hmm. And he refused to give him the key. I'm not like, it's Muhammad. If I knew Muhammad was a messenger, I would have given him the key. He's not a messenger. I ain't giving him the key. So one of the companions grabbed the keys from him without telling the Prophet. He grabbed the key from him, gave him to the Prophet to open the Kaaba. They opened it, he prayed, etc. And they're coming out, and an ayah was revealed to give the key back to the mushrik and apologize to him for taking the key from him in that way. And when he saw that behavior from the Muslims, he became Muslim. Amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Like Allah revealed to the at the time of victory, these are people that were torturing you. And they, he didn't torture him or kill him or stab him, he just snatched the key from him. And the key doesn't even belong to him, he's a mushrik. It doesn't belong to him. But Allah didn't like that and ayah comes down. 
And that's the ayah actually I shared in khutbah today. Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanat ila ahliya. Allah commands you to give the rights to those who deserve them. Oh my God. This is a great example of mercy. Mercy, courtesy, respect. Some of the great people that the people that the people look up to, Alexander the Great or some of these other war uh, uh, hungry people, they would have chopped the man's head off. Yeah. Can you imagine? And gave the key back. It's, it's an unprecedented scenario. Look at how the Prophet there was a Jewish girl, she died, young girl, she died, and her funeral profession, prof, uh, procession was walking by. And the Prophet was sitting and he stood up out of respect. And so one of the companions said, that's a Jew. And he said, well, she's not a human. He had courtesy for all human beings. Ali This is what Muslims have to learn, to be courteous to each other and to be courteous to all humanity, respectful. This is how you invite people. Now, let's talk about this word for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. The word da'wah. The word, we use the word da'wah, we have to give da'wah to Islam, we have to give da'wah to Islam, right? Da'wah literally means invitation. Now, outside of calling people to the religion, have you ever given somebody an invitation to your house for dinner? For lunch? Come over to my place? We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk. Is it possible you insult someone, make someone feel little, insignificant, worthless, and then invite them to your house? And even if you did, would they come? <laughs> it's impossible, isn't it? The very word da'wah means that you have extended respect, courtesy, kindness to somebody else, so much so that you're ready to invite them to your own home. That's what da'wah is. If we forget that basic meaning, we're not able to carry this message to anybody. We're not. It's not about the arguments, it's not about proving whether God exists or not, or whether this is correct or that's correct, or this text or that, that, all that's later. All that stuff is later. The first thing is an attitude of inviting people to something beautiful. Just like you have a wonderful meal at home, I want, you to share, I want to share it with you. There's plenty to go around. And what an amazing meal. The more we share, the more it increases. Instead of going down, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why I want you to share. I want more for myself and more for you. That's the beauty of this religion. And we Muslims shouldn't lose sight of that. And it's very tragic that we're losing sight of that. 